is December 8th, 2022. Hadley Climate Change Committee and public comment starts us off. Does anybody else here for public comment? I'm just gonna put Go for it. You're up, Tony. All right, thanks. Uh, maybe something we can work together on. Um, I would like to respectfully request that we add, you add to the agenda of the upcoming meeting a proposal to discuss and possibly vote in support of a, um, a moratorium on large scale solar projects. And the reason I'm thinking this needs to be discussed is I've seen what's happened around the state especially during the election season, it's been, it's been fairly interesting. Not just around the state, it's been in Shutesbury, uh, Edward Smithfield, uh, where there's been uh, some grassroots groups rising up to kind of slow things down with large scale solar projects. And it's, um, it's obvious what's driving it is that there's, there's a big push right now to, uh, to be, uh, you know, with renewable energy. You know, I recognize that. And, there's a lot of money behind it now. These projects are uh, are really going forward. I don't know if we're completely ready for that. And the, the concern is that these are, uh, especially in Massachusetts, the large scale energy, uh, renewable energy to happen is going to take forest land and farmland. There's no other way around it because it's just, we're, we're a small state here and there's a lot of concern that we're already built up. So that's what's happening in towns like where, where they're taking you know small 60 acre chunks here. They're trying to do Shootsbury and in and, and Northfield, and um, it's a big concern. And my my thinking is, is that they're going to come here eventually. And yeah, who are they? This the, do you have a person, a, a group in mind? The solar companies. They, they, they want to build these solar projects. The same ones that are building in, in where I'm in uh, Northfield and everywhere else. Want to call it big solar. It's big. It's big, it's big money behind it, yeah. and they're they're pushing these, these projects, and they're uh, they're already lobbying to change. Uh, and we're fortunate and happy that we have a lot of land in APR, protected land, land, but it's not all in APR, and APR is not bulletproof when it comes to solar projects. There there are some uh, some discussion of dual use. Which I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but that's been discussed. Uh, where you know that's that might be a workaround. Uh, there's also lobbying going on to change the APR that would allow some that would allow some use of, of that land. Uh, again, as I see it, there's not it's not going to it, there's not enough land unless you start taking from that. It's what's happening in Virginia where they're taking thousands of acres, Wisconsin thousands. We don't have that type of land, but they they're they're now building these big massive uh, massive scale projects. It's so do you have any issue with what they're doing at UMass in taking all the parking lots and converting those to solar? Rooftop and rooftop and parking lots? No. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't really so see. rooftop and parking lots are all right? I, I certainly don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't think it's, yeah, it's, it's not enough when, I, when I'm reading. Uh, it's, it's more expensive and it's, it's just, there's just not enough of it. Um, I read the our own town's solar bylaws and zoning, at least what I could find. It doesn't seem sufficient. It's not very detailed. It's we, we do have some guidelines for solar projects, but they're mostly for aesthetics, and you know, uh, it's it's not adequate to confirm what what I see is going to be um, some big questions. So what I'm hoping to do is is have a discussion, put it on the agenda. Maybe pause. Moratorium will give us just a chance to talk about this. What are the what are the impacts of this? Is it is it really going to happen that the EPR the APR could be modified as, as a lot of these? So Tony, this could really influence a lot of farmers around here who are thinking about the dual purpose. This could really just devastate them financially. I don't I don't see how it's I, I don't. Dual purpose is something that's not even fully developed as a concept. What are they going to grow under the under the ten foot? Um, uh, Good Dual concept. No, no, no. But I know Joe was looking at my brother. Joe was looking at investing 
in chickens and other animals underneath it. So dual purpose in the right, sense dual of purpose. animal farming. Dual purpose, that, that's pretty much what it would do. If you wanted to have grazing, if you wanted to do sheep, it would probably be worth it. You're not going to grow, you're not going to grow potatoes and the crops that we, that we grow and have. And, and other um, than the fact that people, there, there's money out there that money people are making on this, what are your objections? And objections to making money? No, to the solar. What are your objections? I'm just trying to get clear. Oh, I think, I, think I, I, I do not want to see our farmland turn into large scale solar. Yeah, but once you, once you, once you put the. There's a piece of land right now in North that has been in litigation for about almost a year. Mm -hmm. The farmer is hot to put in solar, and the town is, I think they're taking them to court. Yeah, it's happening all over the state where they, there, there are efforts to, to stop it. And, uh, you know, it, w once, you, once you put those solar panels on there, they're on there for 25, 30 years, and who's going to pay to take them off? And and when they're so going back to the Northfield case, the farmer wants to install it? Yes. The town or someone uh, doesn't want it? got to be, in my, in my view, it's, it's you're, you're talking, in, in order to actually have an electric grid that's for renewable energy, it's a lot of land. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm hearing this right, because you're saying that people can't do what they want on their own land. Yeah, that's I'm what you want to propose? I'm not saying that. I, I, don't, I don't know where that comes from. I'm saying we, we, have, we have zoning laws. That, you know, and we're, we're talking about what, we're, we're talking about land that's agricultural land for a, a different use. Not, I don't know where you're coming from, but I can tell people what to do, but they can't do with their own land. Um, my other point is... That well, that is what a moratorium would do. Yeah, that's what you're I mean, saying. It's going to block it. Yeah, it would block it. It, the, it would block large-scale solar projects until, and less than until, we could be comfortable with the impact on our farmland and our forest land. Other other towns are reacting, and they're already when when a town like Wareham, um, when they the, all of a sudden there, there's a, a company comes in, says we're doing this, and and it, it's happening. They're trying to react to it. I'm trying. I'm saying let's discuss it. What what are we going to do? Is is this something we really want to see in the fields that are now potatoes? We want to see miles or acre, hundreds of acres of plastic. Because it, it's visually offensive, or because it's going to do something bad to the run around run with it. I'm just trying to get it. What's that? Run around with it. Well, it doesn't it, have it, any I, impact I, on the animal farmer. It doesn't you stick a pole in the ground, put a panel on it, use it for 25 years, something else comes up and pull the pole out. And who's going to pull, who's gonna well, pull like, the pole? Well, like shade tobacco, so much of this land was covered with shade, we stripped it down, and out. we can put other stuff in. Yeah, they, you can't even recycle it. There's not even a plan for recycling solar panels right now. Okay, they would make that aluminum. That, that's just not true. That is true. Yeah. What, what, it's not aluminum. Poly, it's poly. Um, poly. I don't know if that's the name of the. Uh, parts, of, parts of it may not be recyclable. But the vast I, I, I can show you photos that are already stacking it up because they can't recycle it. Photos that are already. You know, so it, you try to get your. Facts to the other points. It's not true because it is true. There's big problems with recycling uh, solar panels. That's kind of well known. I want to make one more point. Yeah. Um, so this is really a preamble to what I'd like to be a larger discussion. The other point, I think, in my view, when you're a farmer and you're not interested in preserving farmland, but I am, and my other point is the sourcing for or uh, dry here, solar on solar panels. Um, solar panels, right now, the uh, the plastic that goes in the I can't seem to remember the name of the plastic that goes into them, but it's mined a lot. About half of it is mined from the Uyghur region of China, and I read a report just this week on 
on what what that means. And that, and that, as you know, what's going on in the Uyghur region of China is a genocide. Those people, up to a million of them, are now basically in an internment camp. They're being for, uh, forced sterilization, child labor, um, and uh, re-education camps. It's an awful thing. It's a genocide. It's, it's, and um, I don't think when you're talking about modern day slavery that we should have solar panels that are sourced from China, which most of them are, right now that, that come from slavery. And it's not just it's not just a solar panel. They're talking about batteries which come from the Congo, where they're using children as young as seven years old to go down into mines because we need we need cobalt and we need lithium um, for our batteries. Those kids are seven years old. They're they're not going to see pen because we need batteries and and with uh, the the balsa for the uh, for the turbines for the uh, for the wind power, it's come from South America, and they're actually paying their workers in drugs and, and alcohol because they don't want to. They're getting them addicted to drugs, so they're. It's it's basically we're getting these things from slavery. So the other part of my request is that when we have this discussion, that unless and until we can confirm that we're not getting products from slavery, that we stop. Not one more solar panel. I don't care if we don't have one more solar panel. If that's really where they're coming from. What about the shirt you wear? Exactly. Yeah. So maybe we should I'm have fine. maybe I'm we fine should have anti slavery use for the entire economy. Yeah. I'm and not with just it. isolate something that you I'll wear my old stuff. That's fine. Or I or you can make it here. I'm good with that. Happy? I Okay. Fine. You go ahead, Linda. Uh, can I just finish my point and then I'm, I'm really I don't have much more to say. The uh the, um, to try to remember exactly where it was, the solar panels, if we can't confirm that, and, and this, is, this is not speculation, this is you know, documented reports over and over again that these are coming from child labor, slavery, um, we need to stop and we need to find another source for it. Did you bring any of those reports with you? Yeah. I don't know if you have any comments on this as well. Well, just that I would want to bring in the other side of it, which is that, you know, it essentially brings the market to a very small share. Like, I mean, the, the market in the U.S. is much smaller than the Chinese market, which essentially results in us slowing down moving to renewables, and the alternative is we're going to continue to use fossils, which kill a lot of people probably more than are engaged in slavery and uh, child labor. So we might want to yeah. weigh that a little bit. <laughs> Is there a time limit? That's true. <laughs> yeah, right. That too. Solar panels. Okay, so let's stop that. What? I agree. Yeah, let's stop it. I, I, I definitely agree. Until we can say, until we can get, have a solar panel and we're not forcing, um, you know, these, these people, the Uyghurs or whoever else, um, and well, let's just say, let's pause. Let's do it. Let's do it differently, and then we can move on. When we come up with a way to do it, it's not making us sick. We might not have the time um, because continued use of fossil fuels will kill more people than are involved in the slavery of producing the, the panels. Well, that's, that's your opinion, but that's not really backed up by what the United, United Nations says. Well, United I'm sorry, Nations. this is backed up by, by how many people already die from climate impacts right now and how many more will die if we don't do anything. That's actually very much based in science. I'm a sorry. Lot more people there is hope. Alive. A lot there. more people are alive because of a warming climate than are dying because when we are colder. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Um, that we have some hope. Um, right now, they're working very hard to get rare earths here in the U.S. mined, instead of in importing them from China. Right now we have rare earth sources in the United States. It's the problem of separating them from the rock that we have to overcome, and that's being worked on very quickly. Um, they're looking at mining 
tailings piles from old mines contain a lot of rare earths, but the problem is getting them out. So they're working on that technology. So we're hoping, <clears throat> I'm hoping anyway, that we'll be self-sufficient in terms of the rare earths like lithium and so on that we need. There's other things happening in terms of solar panels. They're getting better every day. They're getting more efficient, and they're using safer materials. And so sodium batteries that are around the corner that are yeah. displaced lithium batteries. So at the same time, we have all these problems with them. We're also having lots of developments that are happening fast, so that's part of the discussion, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So other people with public comment? Um, I do agree with Tony. Uh, I personally boycott everything made in China. I don't wear it. I don't buy it. I don't own it. So I agree with boycotting China. Um, my second point is, I'm not, to your point, and I'm sorry, I don't know, know your name. Susie. Okay. Um, did you know that yesterday um, the UK approved their first coal mine to be built? Yes, in, I did in hear three that. three decades because green doesn't work? No, that's not that the, that's, that's not the reason, that, but. Did you know that Emmanuel Macron in France is starting to build coal mines so that his people don't suffer? Okay, so you can say your studies, but there are other studies. It's and look not, up what France is doing. This is as of December 1st. And look up what the UK is doing as of yesterday. Um, they approved their first new coal mine in three decades. Can, can, so I, like can I respond to it? There is a room for compromise here. Well, I would like to put it at least on the, on the facts. It's not because renewable isn't working. It's because Russia cut off energy and they into don't want Europe. To be energy dependent, nor do we. I just want to get the facts right. I do so too. this is I do too. because your study will there'll be another study. I mean every study you bring up will no. bring up another study. There's well, many I'm basing what I'm saying in decades of assessments from the national uh, you know, national climate assessment and international intergovernmental panel on climate change. So I'm you know this is up. not catching what's up. happening yesterday in, in UK or you know last month in it's France. Current. Yeah, so that doesn't undo the entire. But nevertheless, they're doing it because green just, isn't just get, working. It, it's no, not it's about green not, not working. working. Well, I think, I think you're actually, I don't think you're at odds. I think you, what, what you're saying is that it, Russia shut off, uh, Russia shut off the uh, energy sources. Yeah. But that's and a, so that is also a possible. Russia does, does not. It's not renewable from Russia. So it's not any cleaner just because they buy it from Russia. No, no, no. It, it, the point is, you know, you're, you're going to go through a, a tough winter. How are you going to do that? So the, the quickest thing is to turn back on factories that are still there, essentially, you know, the, the power plants that are still there, versus having basically a rebellion among, among the population that is cold. We would do the exact same thing in the United States. The point is not green is not working. Green is not yet there. You can't just jump it out of the ground when you haven't built it. So they're going to rely back on you know the thing that basically they have used before. And just to your point, very recent, Germany is investing in hydrogen at massive scales. It's just not going to be there tomorrow. So they're going to have to do something right now. I just want you to take note of the word, word build. They are building coal yeah. mines building, not turning on yeah. Kelly. the switch they are building. So I, I appreciate that knowledge. How does that apply to the Climate Committee and Housley, though? That, I'm just I think knowledge. you need to take that into consideration on any decision you make, that if you're seeing in Europe or other parts of the world that going completely green isn't working, that you compromise and find what, we can't just say, oh, we're going to go all green, and then we're in a situation that we we're agree that, that we we're agree. We, we, yeah. nobody is saying <laughs> we're just trying to do our best to try to get as much green as we can because when cell phones came out, it was very, very expensive and only a few people had it. But then when they got adapted by everybody, the price came down and it started making a lot more sense. We're almost at that point with solar. We're at that point in the plan. It's already there, yeah. And that's all we're trying to do is be a little, we're not trying to do all of anything. We're not saying you have to do anything or he has to do anything. 
we're just trying to put another option out there. It's all we're doing. It's all it's a good word, option. It's all we're talking about. And I do want to say there is an additional aspect, which, which is not doing anything, i.e. continuing with business as usual, leads us into damage you don't want to live with, your children don't want to live with. So I'm, I'm really interested in looking at the whole picture, not just the switch in where do we get our energy from, but also can we live with the consequences of not doing anything. And I submit to you, we cannot. We meaning globally and including here in Hadley. And I submit to you that China is responsible for 27% of the emissions. Currently, in the world. yes. And China is not going to agree with the Paris Treaty Accords. Okay, well, they are also building coal mines, preparing for war. So I'm. This really wasn't my question. I'm just going back on what Tony said about China, uh, because I want to bring up a whole other topic to tell you the truth. Um, and I don't want to take up the floor, so I'll get to my topic. Um, my topic being is, what is your understanding of the open meeting law in regards specifically to changing meeting dates and posting those dates? I asked that question in a letter to the town administrator, and the response I received back from the town clerk I was not comfortable with that response. So I'd like to hear your interpretation of the open meeting law. So last month we had a guest who couldn't join us during our regular scheduled session. We moved it up and 48 hours ahead of time we posted the agenda. We put it on the website and it was all very public. Where besides the website did you post it? Where were your public... That's what the town does. The the town clerk posts it on the website. Where you like. Every town in America. We'll post it anywhere you like. Every, where, where would you like us to post it? Uh, town hall. Okay. Post office. Senior center. Library. Now it's hard to do posts. that on two days' notice, though. Um, well, you, that's your uh, challenge. How about if we just call you? What if we just call you and let you know? The this is a law. I don't think we need. This is this is the open no, meeting law. It kind of be a move. Rescheduled meetings must be posted in public places. And we did. I sent it to the town clerk with the agenda, and we had a meeting change website because the, the town yeah. administrator couldn't make our regular meeting. I have no, I have no, of course there's going to be meeting changes. That's why I'm bringing this up. Okay? That is not the issue changing the meeting. It's where is your public posting? The website does alone does not adhere to the open meeting law. It must be posted in public places as well. Do you well, happen please. to know what other committees do? Absolutely. You'd what have do to they take do? that up with the town clerk, because that's where it goes through. It doesn't go through the individual I've never committee. I've in America that doesn't post in public places. Not everyone owns a computer. Well, do, do other committees here in Hadley do it? I guess we only were asked to do what we did, and so if there's another requirement, we were not aware of it. It's the, open, it's the open meeting, understanding the open meeting law. It is a requirement. But it goes through the and town clerk. No, it doesn't go through the committee. It the, the, this is per the attorney general. This so this is the process that we were instructed on in Hadley. Two days ahead, make sure you give the agenda to the town clerk. She receives it. She posts it. Mm -hmm. And then we can meet. It must be posted in public places in addition to the website. That's great. The, I got it. Next time, we will make sure we get that. I've got it down. So thank you. And um, I mean, that's why I wanted to see what is your understanding, because mm -hmm. that's a violation not to do that. And that, in, but not everyone has a computer. And per the attorney general, it, Meeting changes must be posted in public places. And I've just given you several suggestions. I was shocked you didn't do that. It's not the meeting change, it's your method of adhering to the open meeting law. Well, no one I ever... I went on to ask, yeah. is there a misunderstanding of the ethics? Did, did everyone sign the ethics test? Well, I think you're talking to the wrong group. I mean, 
Every goes committee. through the town clerk. We're, we're directed by the town clerk, the select board, and others to follow a certain protocol. So you'd have That's to, what yeah. we did. And we had one meeting change in the last year. I have no issue with a meeting change. That will happen. It's you not having a secret meeting. That's why they call it the open meeting law per the attorney general. I think you're, you're writing yeah. intent into our shift. Yeah. I mean, we were basically instructed to do what we told you we did. If you would like us to do something different, we're gonna do that from now on. It's not, has nothing to do with the interpretation of this or certainly not with an ill intent. We simply followed the rules that we were given. Thank you. I think and, 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 yeah. But this is a law. It's okay, not, I hear you. Yeah, we yeah. hear you. But yeah. so, I just want to understand the ethics involved here. And there is no, it, 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 there was it, it, no malintent. That's why we made it very public. Very public is not the website. You've got to take the, the, Thank you for acknowledging in the future that you'll post it, the library, uh, senior center, library and there senior will be center, changes. Town hall. That's to be expected. And then I wondered if everyone has signed the ethics test that every committee needs to, meaning they understand the ethics that are involved. I am not suggesting you're unethical. I just want to make well, sure Well, it you're sounds like you are, actually. I just want to, there are ethics for every single committee that have to be adhered to. And I just wanted to understand your interpretation of how you see I, I would encourage you to bring that up with the select board because I have a feeling that they've been given that kind of, and town clerk, that they've given that in, same instruction to other committees. And if this is a broader issue, it should probably be addressed at that level as opposed to with us per se. Yeah, it, it shouldn't just apply to one committee. It should apply absolutely, to every committee. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Did, did, did you... Did you um, I'm just curious. Did you, did you sign the uh, the ethics of the I did. open meeting? I think it's I think it's a common yeah. when you when a committee is formed or new members they you you have to go to the town hall and we sign off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Jessica Spanknable. Is that every member or is it just the chair? Like, no, it's it's the members. Good. That's good to know because I didn't know if it was a misunderstanding. But if you, everyone signed off on what I call the ethics test, then it's a... It was a date when the town administrator could join us. It, it, I have no issue right. with a change in a meeting. It's how you adhere to the open meeting law. And I won't say it again. It, it's, you, you have to adhere to it. Every committee has to. That's why it's, it is what it is. It's that serious. Yeah. I have... Go for it. Um, I'm here basically because I'm concerned about the dike. Whole different issue. Um, I went to the climate day, <clears throat> and it was extremely well run. Thank you very much. Um, I learned a lot. And one of the things that um, really concerned me was the FEMA guy yeah. who said, who was asked what's his major concern in Hadley. And he said, the dike, the dike, the dike. When I first moved here 20 some years ago, I thought it was crazy to have a town built at river level and, and discovered that it had been flooded a number of times and that the dike had been built <clears throat> after a serious flood and followed by a serious flood and not changed or rebuilt. And then the FEMA guy pointed out where the flood would happen if, and it's not, you know, if, it's when because of the increasingly intense rainfall and <clears throat> that it's, the predictions are that it's going to flood more often and, and worse. And that's going to come, they thought it would be coming down West Street, which is where it came before, but he was indicating that it's going to be further up toward the transfer station and it would really swamp all of um, Honeypot mm -hmm. and West Street and down through um, Middle Street, Aqua Vita, Cut off, cut off from the bridge. Um, so I went and checked the altitude of my house. <laughs> you know, I said, how high up am I? Um, but the the dike is being undercut. It's already had to be repaired a couple of times. Right now, uh, there's infrastructure money coming. I don't know if Hadley's in good position to get that money. But <clears throat> this committee 
It isn't. You know, I don't mm. believe we are. No, we no. don't have capacity to get it. And the, the single biggest problem I see in Hadley is not solar, although that's important, and, you know, going green, uh, I'm concerned that climate's effect on the duck, excuse me, on the dike, and how we can save Hadley. Yep. Um, and I mean save Hadley, because <laughs> yeah. everything's flat. And he pointed out also that the um, emergency services, <clears throat> um, police and fire, are in a floodplain. Um, and anybody who lives along that river is, it just seems to me unconscionable that we don't do something about that. In the last meeting, we decided that would be one of our main priorities. Good. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Not for me. I'm above it. Me too. <laughs> Two hundred eighty feet. <laughs> That's. <laughs> but I would be surrounded by water. I'd need a canoe. <laughs> above, above the historical flood elevation or sea level. <clears throat> above sea level. <laughs> Well, yeah, 280, 280 feet above sea level. Yeah, but how, how far are you from the sort of historical, typical levels of, say, a 100-year flood? Oh, I'm up a ways. Um, but, the, you know, water flows downhill. It's going to flow from the river all the way through this area, and it's going to not just... Just because you're up on a hill doesn't mean you're going to be out of, yeah. out of danger, because there'll be water... Well, in the, the big flood, I think it was 36... People were using boats to get from house to house down West Street and Middle Street, and so even if you're above the river, you're going to have to deal with no place to go. with water. And I can, I mean, I can just foresee. Well, I guess I want to just say whatever this committee can do to get infrastructure money rolling mm. for research to find out what you have to do, what what does need to be done by experts who know something about rivers and, and geology and who can help the town come up with a plan. And I think that's the first step before you can get in line with money, yep. or to get money. So that's my comment. What street are you on? I'm on Kimberly Lane, which is above Mount Warner. It's okay. Woodlawn. I'm off Woodlawn. All right. <clears throat> and that's kind of high up above the valley. But at the foot it's kind of, my house is in the middle of a, of a hill, and then there's hill below my house. <coughs> so water comes down, <laughs> yeah. it surrounds, but, um, and it can, Mount Warner's right there, but water can flow in and around Mount Warner, and that's what the FEMA guy was saying. It's not just people along the river. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. anybody in Hadley, so. So you're one of the spurs off Woodlawn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next to the Zasky tree farm. Okay. The, the abandoned one. Gotcha. But. Steve, Tom, any public comments? Um, didn't Amherst or Shrewsbury or Leverett, didn't they put a moratorium on large solar fields? There are some, there are some um, grassroots groups that are... I, I believe, you know, reading the Amherst paper, that they were pushing to have a moratorium to catch up on, you know, what's going on because they're concerned about losing more forest land versus farmland. Um, Amherst considered it building a couple of boats uh, last about a year ago, I think. Okay. Pretty close. Eversource is planning one on the Russell Street site, but they're, they've been talking more about, <clears throat> there's, far, there's farmland behind it, but they're talking about doing it over the parking lot and over the roof. Uh, yeah. So, well, that's, I think if it's over a parking lot, I think that's a good utilization of space, if, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Uh, off of 291, I think it's Smith and Wesson, their parking lot mm -hmm. is solar panels. I believe Big Y, um, they have the solar panels on the parking lot. I mm -hmm. think that's an excellent. Utilization, and you don't have to plow snow. Well, and acres and acres that you mass. Right. Oh, yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the incoming governor uh, is going to prioritize um, solar development on all the gray spaces, basically, that we already have. Um, that's, you know, just to make a sort of a, a graded 
decision tree, like first use all the spaces that are already used, whatever it's brown fields, parking lots, buildings, you know, before you go, then marginal land, before you go into any of the pristine agricultural forest land. But however, solar panels don't work in the night. There's no sun. But you'll you know, combine it with other other sources. Yeah. Geothermal and, and coal, oil, gas. Geothermal, wind. Yeah. Batteries are getting really better too. Um, they need you have to have the batteries. There was an article in the I believe Northampton paper or was it on is that in that website? There was a car fire in Southampton. Um, the car was parked outside, but it was an electric Chevy that the battery exploded, burnt the car up, and damaged the house. They're fortunate the, house, the car was not part of the garage. The batteries are getting better, but a battery is a battery. And batteries can explode and start fires. And they are, they are going to forest already. They're doing shoe spares. 60 acres that they're trying to take and wear. Uh, right, in the, right in the shoreline, they go into the chopping down. I don't, they call it the um, pine. Pine Barren, and it's a there's not much forest that's like that, and that's that's at the Cape like that. And so they are already taking the um, forest land. Maybe if everybody puts them on their roofs, we won't have to take land. Well, I think about the big array they have off Huntington Road, where they put it on the hill that they really couldn't farm. That's UMass, isn't it? That's a UMass. Well, I don't think so. Oh, that's right. That was private. private. Oh, it's private. That's private. Yeah, the, the one on Mill Valley Road is on Lousy Farmland as well. I mean, I think Hadley's been, the few big sites that we have, Hadley's been pretty good at having them end up not on prime Hadley Road. Well, they have the one over by the swamp by Target. Right. right. It's not good land. So, yeah, and that's by carefully. Yeah, and I think everybody here agrees with that the first priority is to stick them on the parking lot, stick them on your house, stick them everywhere you can, and then you know, take up fine land and trees as a last resort. But there will, you know, if there's some land that's really bad farmland, you know, it's not the worst thing to happen. You stick a post in there and pull it out and you're not. I just had solar reinstalled on my house after redoing the roof, and it sure is nice not to get an electric bill. Any sunny day. Beautiful. I want to get it as soon as my mortgage is paid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can we focus back a little bit? What, what's our next step? So, yeah, so we have a few more. Um, a few more steps. So um, I can give you a quick report. We have um, an energy agent who is coming in and they are doing an energy audit of all the town buildings to see how we can improve energy. Uh, and this is something that we could use to apply for green communities. So they've been doing the schools over the last few days. Um, and they will keep, I think they're going to be doing the pump stations and other things and just see where the better energy, you know, are they well insulated? Are they well weatherized? Are they at all efficient? And then we will keep working with the town accountants to try to get a sense of the utility bill for this community. Because I don't think anybody can say with certainty how much we spend on utilities. It's unfortunate, but that's where it's at. So hopefully they can narrow that down. Um, they expect that they'll have this done before the first of the year. So if we can get all of that done and put in our green application, we are the second to the last town in Hampshire County to go green. Every other community besides South Hadley, has gone green. Hadley has not. And if we can apply for that, um, it would be a significant, significant boost to the town 
um, $130,000. So. What's the definition of go green? You, so there's five, five, five different Tom. Um, there's five different criteria, okay. and if you meet all those five criteria, and if you take a look, we're not using any of the new three buildings because these are built to new energy standards. But for all the older buildings, depending on the utility use, if you qualify, there's one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for the town. Okay, Jack. The design of the of the new library that's supposed to be service for the town for the next hundred years I'll just say nicely it's not environmentally friendly with the high ceilings and you know it can't be it can't be. You know, it's it's not to to heat and cool that many cubic feet of dead space it, it cannot be a green building that's my thought yeah this one's gonna get solar yeah and that one too but you know, we'll see how that all unfolds. How much do you have to spend to get the 130000 I mean, is there a dollar amount you must spend X amount of money to get the 130000 no. Or volunteer time. It's all volunteer time, and they're just looking at current energy use in all the old buildings in town. Okay. So you don't have the to schools. spend money to get that money? No. no. We are talking about is saving money by not having this big. Yeah. So basically, um, if they need a new vehicle, they'll make sure that it's energy efficient. You know, if they are looking at, I'm trying to think of some of the other criteria that they had. Um, there were some things about zoning. They, altogether, there were five criteria, and we've met four of the five. So the last one is just a matter of gathering information um, and pulling that together. And basically making a suggestion where else yeah. the town could invest some of that money to so improve b the, the windows yeah. on buildings or stuff like that. So the intent behind it is they're trying to get towns to spend less money on consumable energy, whether it's green, whether it's fossil fuel, whatever. How do you help towns spend less money on utilities year after year after year? So it could be that there might be some insulation ideas for the town hall. It could be that there's some mini split ideas for either of the schools, those sorts of things. So part of that money that we would get would go toward installing whatever the Energy Star Mass Save, whatever the group, involved that's doing the energy audit whatever they recommend to save energy year after year after year and not spend so much and that's why i think so many towns in massachusetts i think now they're well over 300 of the 361 cities and towns have done it all right so that's where that stands um michael um what were some of your comments any discoveries on valley bikes have you learned anything new um i called the coordinator for the valley bike program um the name is and they have identified they have a bunch of money in hand to put a bicycle dock at the not the Pyramid Mall, but the Whole Foods Mall. Okay. We used to call the Dead Mall. I don't know if we're still allowed yeah, to call yeah. it that. Um, and um, the mall wants it very badly. It's going to be good for business. Sure. Um, it's a question of where to put it. They're currently thinking, because of the complication of putting it, all, all the all the tenants in that mall had easements on their sidewalks saying they can sell pumpkins or whatever they logs or whatever they want on their front sidewalk. And so it's complicated to put something in front of their building mm -hmm. like that. So they decided that the easiest place of least resistance is to stick it where the bike path enters the rear of the mall 
near Whole Foods. The problem is if somebody's riding a bike there, they park their bike and they have to walk all the way around the mall mm -hmm. to get to, to do whatever business they're going to do. So um, I um, have a pretty good working relationship with the, the person who manages the Whole Foods store just from having sold to them for many years. And so I put in a call to her to see if they would be interested in cutting through some of that legal prop, you know, making making the front maybe a more easier path of resistance. She hasn't gotten back yet, but I just, I just reached out to her today yesterday. Where does the bike path come by the mall? It is, um, it runs right behind both malls. Okay. Um, and um, there is currently an exit or an entrance to the bike path almost right behind Whole Foods, but actually it's probably behind Michael's. Okay. Um, and that's where, I think that's where they're thinking about putting it. I said, you know, really what we would like is something that would serve downtown Hadley and put a dock there. And they not, are not opposed to that idea. The problem is they have to cite these things where people are going to use them a lot. And so they've got to stick them near a lot of business. And so once they do the malls, then we can try to get them to put one, you know, in downtown Hadley that Hadley residents can jump on a bike and, and go where they want to go, basically. Um, so, um, anyway, so I, I, I think that, you know, what, what, what they want from Hadley is some cooperation, basically, some buy-in. And, and, and I think every town, a lot of towns are already doing it have a bike share thing. You, you join their program, you give them their $3,000 or whatever it is, and then you're in, and you can help them attract the fifty and the $100,000 that they, they will raise for you to, to put these things in their face. And they do that with businesses, and the businesses want to put the money in, they bring the money in from a variety of different sources. But we do need, ultimately, to demonstrate that, you know, that Hadley was willing to play, play a, you know, to work, be a player, and, and figure out where to, where to do this. Basically. Are they thinking about? There's an entrance, South Maple to Wal to Walmart, to I, that trail, and I thought that when you're talking, that would be a really good I, spot. I think you're absolutely right. Because that, that's where I park my bike or my car when I want to take the rail trail. And absolutely right. It's a big so, area. Say again, which is. Which when you go down South Maple, you know where the rail trail crosses yeah. South Maple. On the right hand side, there's a parking lot that's the mall and Walmart. Okay. It's yeah. big space, it's a big area. And that is exactly, I think, I think that's where we should be trying to, trying to guide it. We don't have a lot of standing because we're not, we haven't joined the group, but as a committee, we can kind of, you know, tell them we're going to help hopefully bring Hadley along. and, and uh, I think you're right. That would serve both malls. It would be much more uh, accessible yeah. to, to the businesses. What else can we do to support you and what you're trying to do? I, I don't know. I'm both mostly just getting information right now. I, I guess just continue to allow me to represent the climate committee when I go stick my nose in this, these people's business space. Okay. Yeah, what's going on. All right. Well, just let us know if you can think of other ideas. Oh. I ask one last question. When you said the only two towns that are not complying with are Hadley and South Hadley. It's not a matter of compliance. What is they, they've been accepted to because they've qualified for. Okay. So South Hadley, okay. which also has an independent power company. Okay. Um, South Hadley and Hadley. Every other town in Hampshire County has been in green communities, some towns for years and years. Part of the reason to join green community isn't just the designation fee, but every year after, mm -hmm. you get opportunities to compete for grants that Hadley, for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. haven't been able to because we didn't do the first step. Do you have a, a grant writer? Do you pay a grant writer consultant or do you have we don't have a grant writer. Well, you know, there is a hope that we can use a little bit of that 130 to um, at least have a part-time grant writer help. Absolutely. To, but 
Yeah. It's a very limited amount. It's like ten thousand bucks right. or something like that. They have limits. It's m it's mostly for energy efficiency. Right. That's right. really what they're pushing. Grants. If you don't have a grant writer, right? Somebody's well, Carolyn is has people that she works with for certain things. So last time when she was here, she was talking to us about the uh, the help she gets around you know tracking grants and applying for grants for the dike studies and updates of FEMA flood maps and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's a we're a very capacity limit town, which is exactly why we wanted to, you know, get this kind of money to boost it. Right, to go toward a green yeah. writer. Yeah. To get more money. That's basically yeah, like the hope. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but also, you know, putting it back into some of the older buildings mm -hmm. and improving their energy efficiency. That's part of the intent of Mass DOER, Mass Department of Energy Resources. They really want us to lower the bill, especially as the electric rates, oil rates, everything goes so high. I think oil is like $2 a gallon more this winter than last year. At least. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Paul Pfeiffer was hoping to attend, but it looks like he can't make it. He's on the school committee and wanted to talk to us about some of the things that they're doing with Hopkins and um, possibly the elementary school, but I think it's mostly Hopkins. Any idea what you could do across the school? Um, have you filled in the survey? Yes. Have, have I? Uh, any idea what you think they should do with it? What did you put in the survey? <laughs> What's that? What did you put in the survey? I think they should do something about taking it down. Take it down. Uh, Unless they rehab it, which is going to cost millions. Yeah. What, yeah. what are they going to do with it? Yeah. Um, what do you think, Jack, they should do with it? So I think they should look at rehabbing it, seeing if anybody will buy it, although that's going to take away one corner of prime town land. Um, but see if there's a way that they can keep it up for a while. You know, I hate to see all these so old have, buildings. It's cost millions. They don't even know how much. Yeah. It's going to cost. Well, I don't know how much it's going to cost to take it down either. That's granite. That's brick. Would you be opposed to like letting somebody else do that? I wouldn't be opposed if you. They gave in Sutherland. They gave the building away to the restaurant for one dollar. <laughs> Well, there's Barry Roberts. I think of some of the work so he's done. I think what did they do with North Hadley with the North Hadley Hall? They sold it. Yeah. yeah. But so they kind of got that jammed up and had a lawsuit and something. But I think that's been settled. Guys, like if, if the town does that, it's end up looking like this big high ceiling. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna be into a project, and you you're gonna have to finish it regardless of the cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I agree. With you. I think we should. I just w want your guys' thoughts on Russell School. Well, if you want our thoughts as private citizens, that's fine. If you want it related to this committee? Yeah, as a committee. We have no say. We haven't gotten involved. They have a whole Russell School study group. I actually went to the last meeting a few weeks ago here where they had an open forum. Um, I, I would hate to see that building go. I Speaking loved it. As an Speaking as an individual. And I had no problem at all that they took Hooker School and laid it flat. That place was covered in asbestos. That was a good one to get rid of so the town didn't face bigger liability issues with all that had been constructed with. The Russell School was built at a totally different time, 1880s, I think it was constructed. I think so. Totally different materials granite, brick, freestanding, free form. Um, Regardless, if you're going to save it, it's going to need a lot of money. One idea that was floating around here a discussion one day was rehabbing it, which would be expensive, really. Oh, my God. But then not, re not um, redoing or renovating the inside, but rather putting in partitions and renting it out to makerspace, like they do in Florence yeah. and um, a couple other places. They've got these old mill buildings, and they renovate them on... You know, stabilize them, and then make them look nice on the outside. <laughs> and then inside, they put partitions, and people can rent small spaces to make, you know, whatever they want to make. 
Or scraps, yeah. right, the poet corner, whatever. It's a really, really difficult decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, poor Hadley, like so many other New England towns, has been going through the North Hadley Hall issue, the Hooker School issue, the Russell School issue. Some buildings they raised completely, like Hooker School. Some they sold off. You know, hopefully they'll miss Tirka or whoever bought it. Uh, who bought North Hadley Hall? Boysvert. Uh, Boysvert. Boysvert's, but there was another builder. Yeah, yeah. He's parking there. Yeah. Anyways, hopefully they can renovate that and save that. I know there's a lot of damage upstairs, things like that. Hopefully they have enough room for parking. But Russell School is really tricky. Because it's historical. It's historical and, you know, just a lot of town history. Tom, did you go to school there? Fifth and sixth grade? Fifth and sixth grade. What do you think did you? What do you think Fifth and sixth. I, I like old buildings. <laughs> However, you got to be practical. So, yes. I, I'm, so I'm not really, because, because Hadley has a, the Macress property, Macress's will, he left it to the Hadley Historical Society. If, they did, if the Historical Society did not have that property, on Middle Street, that would be a good utilization of the Russell School. However, they have property, and how much property can you have? So, you know, I I like old buildings, but the the you got to do a cost benefit analysis, and then I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I just wish they could find somebody like a Barry Roberts type, what he did with Amherst Cinema, to completely turn it around, because that project wasn't going anywhere. Right. He hopped in, he helped it get finished, right. and now they have it. Right. It's not an easy decision. Mm -hmm. That's really, really a tough one for the town. Do you think they should take it down? I think they should sell it. They should what? Sell it. Sell it. Mm -hmm. Because it's not getting any better leaving it like it is. And it can't be, in order for have people in there, they got to have it before you do anything for safety measures. Yeah. But based on the location, I would say a long-term lease rather than outright sale. Losing that land. That's a good idea. That's you hate to lose that. My mom was a plane spotter for Nazi planes on the, the wings of Russell School. You know, I grew up hearing those stories yeah. of all of us who lived it. it. Well, you went there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a great school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It had style. You know, it was just different than the boxes that was Hopkins. So, yeah. All right, those were some of the bigger issues for today. Kelly, you get everything you needed? I got this. Uh, yes. Well, I'll just say yes. <laughs> I'm just not clear, like, what are the next steps? Um, yeah, I mean, you all agree that it's yeah. something we should be really focused on, but what's the next step? Uh, Michael, what did you just ask about? What's the next step? in terms of identifying what we need to do to like stabilize the dike. The dike. Great. Thank you. I've given a little bit of thought to that and I could be totally wrong, but I think in, in my understanding we need to be accepted as a green community to get in line um, for grants and get a grant writer to start applying. But we need, there's infrastructure money, this I do know, um, for projects like the dike. But we have to have um, money to get research done, engineering research done first. So that's really the first step, is to get money to do research on what has to be done with that dike. Uh, what's happening wrong with it? Where would it break? How could it be, you know, rebuilt? Wasn't there some, wasn't there yes, I took, yeah. I took notes on it. I can, I can yeah. relate those to you. So basically, the dike has not been maintained very well. Um, her main priority at the moment is to try to get um, Hadley to be a FEMA National Flood Insurance Program approved community because that allows you to access a whole bunch of additional funding. Um, they're now in phase two of that process. Um, the first pr step basically is address the maintenance issues and that means 
mowing, clearing vegetation, yeah, drainage yeah, yeah. system maintenance, and pest management, uh, doing something for, with emergency supplies. I forget exactly what she said there. Then minor repairs, and all that is sort of under, taken all that together is something like under 100,000 pre-COVID. Um, the major repairs on the dike is 900,000. Um, so it's a whole other different ticket. And um, the flood map is being updated right now, which is a pre-requirement to becoming an NFIP uh, approved community. And let's see, what else did she say? And that she has engineers, you know, like working on that. And I guess at least the, the earlier steps of that are already in the capital improvement plan. So it, they're budgeted they're, for yeah. and they're working on it. So it, things, but, things but it's are sort happening. of like it's yeah. a process. And who is they? So you know, basically, it's a, it's Carolyn working with the Department of Public Works essentially to move things forward, and she has hired, I guess, an engineering firm to do the work. That's, so that's so actually, if you go up on the town website under the climate committee, you can look at the notes from hmm. last time, and there it, everything that Susie just mentioned is detailed in those notes. Oh, good, um, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So we had a great conversation with Carolyn when she was here. So. Yeah, because I remember the I FEMA guy said, "Research, research." And know what you're going to do before you spend well, more money. It's a complicated issue, and Hadley happens to own those dikes. There are other dikes around that um, communities don't necessarily own. They could be owned by the Corps of Engineers, and they're responsible for the maintenance and upkeep and all of that. So this is really tricky that you know Hadley has ownership, but it also has the responsibility mm -hmm. of so keeping the So the Corps doesn't up. own these dikes? Ooh. Not on our nope. front. They might give us some money to fix them. And, and just, yeah. you know, one of the things I, I keep, every time I see another possibility for grant money coming through, I'm sending it to Carolyn, and she's aware of it. There is a, an upcoming webinar that's all about how can Western Massachusetts town get access to some funding so she's on it. I, I got the feeling she's on it. I think we need to get clearer how we can help push. Yeah. And I think a piece of that is educational to get the conversations going in the, in the community and, and ask questions, you know. Um, I don't know how many people in Hadley understand how serious that is. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Well, and you take <laughs> an issue like Russell situation. School that has a certain seriousness, the dike is completely different. I mean, it, this could just wipe out Russell School. So many people. <laughs> yes. so, the river's been flowing for thousands of years. Okay. Yeah. And yes, I do remember, was it 15 years ago, there was a lot of damage at the end of West Street. I, I, I remember yeah. that. Um, I remember the 1986 flood. Yeah. So, you know, but the river's been flowing for thousands of years. And, and Although not always in the same path. And my father would talk about the 1936 flood. Yeah. So, we went through it, um, and the kids went to, um, I think the, the people that were affected by the flood with the Amherst College to the gymnasium to sleep there uh, during the 1936 flood. He's told that story many times. So, um, Just the river's been flowing. I hear you about it's been here for a long time, but I wonder how accepting people would be for their entire life savings to be wiped out. So I, I think there is a lot we could do to improve safety. So I don't know. Like you said, I think people might not be aware of how much at risk they are already and how the risk is actually increasing over time. Yeah, and it's being, the, the river over time undercuts Right. In that bend, it's undercutting that dike, and they have repaired it and repaired it. But it just takes one really good flood. And I just, the FEMA guy puts fear of God in me. Yeah, <laughs> rightly so. Yeah. Well, and that's something we can look at more in January. So, Kelly, if you want to put that on the to do list. Oh, and speaking of, the next meeting would be January 12th. That's the second Thursday. Can I just quickly mention, yeah. there was an article in the Hampshire Gazette, I think this morning, about uh, the Northampton 
uh, Resilience Hub. Did people see that article? Mm -hmm. I encourage you to look at it. So Northampton has acquired this, the First Baptist mm -hmm. Church, which oh, has I been empty for a long time. Yes. And they're, ha they're putting together from many sources the money now to essentially turn it into a community resilience hub. And I just thought it's maybe just educational mm -hmm. for us. I hope that this building serves that, but we have not, it's not talked about in that way. Well, so eventually and, we should maybe have that. That's maybe not the highest priority given what we just took on with. And it sounded time. like Amherst just bought the VFW for a town resilience hub. Yeah, well, so for, for this a is. a homeless shelter. Okay. The VFW, yeah. if, I'm, if I read it correctly, you're doing it as a homeless shelter. Yes. Yeah. Well, isn't that. But this also yeah. is actually has a double purpose. Well, it's, it's, so. it's sad that they ship the jobs to China and then the people here are, are unemployed and homeless. And, and there's other factors, I, I understand that. But it is sad. You walk too much crap at Walmart for too long. <laughs> um, I agree. China. I agree. But that's what the, the NAFTA agreement in this country lost 55,000 factories. Yeah. And you wonder why Social Security is going broke. I, I can't figure it out. It's awful. All right. <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's buzzing from school. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.